Okay, just a, another um, show and tell video, and this one is on the Rubber Stamp album by Jenny K. Miller, Lowry Thompson. This is a late 70s publication of The Art of Rubber Stamping, and it's kind of interesting, you know, the way that this book goes into the various aspects of all things rubber stamps up until that time. It talks about, you know, the kind of the invention and uh, creation of the rubber stamps. And there's dates in here going into the 1800s, 1873 and 1892. They're talking about Goodyear and, uh, you know, how that company, you know, came to, uh, I don't know, you know, be one of the foundational kind of a uh, creators of the, you know, the materials that we came to use or have come to use, uh, you know, for making rubber stamps and the processes are still, you know, pretty much the same as far as like the vulcanization of them and whatnot and probably the formulas in terms of, uh, you know, how they get the raw materials from the, uh, the rubber trees themselves. So anyways, um, I just do a I, it's not a quick flip through, but because I, I haven't looked at this book in so long, and uh, I don't know, I kind of do a like a almost a page by page, you know, kind of a uh, I don't know flip through of this um, cool publication, and uh, I don't know, it was just kind of interesting for me to see some of the uh, applications of how stamps were being used at the time and continued to be used, I would say through. I don't know, the 80s even, you know, the late 80s, you know, in terms of some of the kind of the minimal types of applications and kind of the more artsy looks, you know, in terms of things like um, faux postage and uh, male artisans and how they utilized, um, you know, the format of the envelope for their artwork and whatnot, you know, which is a big kind of a, you know, early day push of the uh, rubber stamp um, rubber stamps uh, as artwork form so I don't know fun stuff you can still find this book out there on places like Amazon and eBay um, just enter the rubber stamp album and then say book at the end of it when you're you know entering your uh, search parameters and you'll come up with this uh, this publication I bought it used in sometime around the early 2000s in a used bookstore for 850, but I don't know. There, I saw cheaper versions of it uh, online just now before I uh, shot this video just to uh, see if it was still around or readily available. Okay, a little show and tell here with a book called The Rubber Stamp Album by Joni K. Miller and uh, Lowry Thompson. This is a book that came out in 1978. This is before I started, you know. Uh, at a stamp of the hand company, which was, you know, uh, a good nine years later, but I seem to recall this book being around the office there. I don't know if it was out on the bookshelf still, you know, this is kind of a niche, you know, type of book. And um, I found it sometime later, probably around the 2000-something, you know, time period. And it was in a used bookstore um, in the oh, kind of the craft section or something like that, arts and crafts um, section, and I picked it up for eight fifty, but it looks like the original cover price was six ninety five. but I always found this book to be interesting, you know, being in the rubber stamp industry and whatnot, but it really goes into, um, you know, at that point in time, it was, you know, it was talking about the hobby of it for sure, but um, this was, you know, really early on in the uh, the hobby of it but I'm kind of surprised at looking at this there's a lot of information in the back as far as um, references and uh, you know companies that were around at the time or stores that were selling rubber stamps a lot of it was um, male artisans and artists and teachers that were using stamps at the time but um, I don't know I was kind of surprised at the uh, yeah, the sheer um, number of references. But anyways, it goes into the contents here. I haven't looked at this in quite some time, so bear with me. And I'm really not the, you know, a great person to talk about, you know, a lot of the people that are in here, you know, the people that were around for much, you know, 
much earlier than I was in rubber stamping would be good to talk about some of the uh, the different companies and names that come up in this book but um, I don't know they're just talking about just the general concept of stamping things here's a couple you know baby footprints you know I guess that's kind of creating a stamp but it's going into the history of it and I, I saw some uh, you know uh, names down here like Charles Goodyear you know the Goodyear Tire Company I, I, I remember hearing that that's where um, kind of the rubber stamp kind of idea came from as far as the technology at the time but they're talking about you know things going there's dates in here like 1770 and whatnot but look at this book here too you know I mean this is 1978 so you know they had to do these little paste ups like this this is a two color book right here here's this kind of purple you know tone and they use this throughout the book here um, and these various pages I thought it was kind of interesting how they laid out this um, book here you know this um, rubber stamp hinder history area right here this would have all had to have been you know hand stamped like that you know back then it, w it wasn't you know there wasn't some kind of a you know typesetting um, program or font you know that you were laying out these um, layouts and so um, it's I don't know it has that feel to it that kind of hand you know m uh, pasted up um, look you know just in terms of the spacing of it and I find it you know I don't know looking back at it it's like it's kind of charming you know that's the word I would have for it but look at this you know old style of rubber stamps and company right here the Houston Stamp and Stencil uh, Company, Inc., you know, these all these, I don't know where they found all this material, you know, all these old engravings, you know, of, um, you know, stamps or stamp advertisements or whatnot, but where they must have um, came up with all of these um, images, you know, back in, uh, you know, the late 70s, um, I don't know, is really I don't know it, it, it kind of baffles my mind look at this circus rubber stamps right here um, but all, there's all this information here you know these dates around here late 80 18 you know 1870s 1911 you know on and on Buster Brown rubber stamps here um, stamp trivia I don't know they're talking about just like a rubber stamp divorce, rubber stamp marriage, you know, the political rubber stamp. I don't know. It goes into all kinds of things. How stamps are made. Look at these little tiny illustrations here of uh, the entire process. I guess, I don't know. They got someone to uh, do these little drawings. You know, here's a little press and vulcanizer, I guess, and the camera um, shooting uh, uh, kind of a negative from that. And uh, I guess, you know, it, it really hasn't changed, you know, since then as far as the process goes, you know, unless you're using clear stamps or something like that. But, um, you know, a mang uh, magnesium um, etching is made and then you throw it into the, uh, the vulcanizer and the negative is made and from that, you know, rubber is made. But um, all these little illustrations are kind of cool. And, you know, back in that time, there weren't a lot of images available. Here's a little image right here, though, as I say that. I bought this image from, um, I think, a 100 Proof Press or something like that. It's probably a, uh, a copyright-free illustration or something like that, you know, that's been used right there for those little mushrooms. But, um, oh, I don't know. I guess this was a catalog that they got. It says, George Keenan's first catalog. And I guess those were cattle, you know. I, I've never heard of that name before. They might have even been gone by the time I started working for a stamp the hand company. Um, all these little images like this, I don't know. Things. A lot of the images came from um, copyright-free artwork, okay, at the time. Because those were readily available in things like Dover copyright free illustration books or people would just be getting used books with a lot of old engravings and just kind of utilizing those images from those um, those books and I would assume that they would all be you know um, copyright free at the time you know due to the duration of it but here's a 
quite a big or a company that became quite large and this is all night media right here and look at the you know the different types of images that they probably had at the time kind of funky images and that company I was rather large I, I remember my boss knew the owner of all night media and uh, I don't know, they sold it or something like that, and they bought it back. I don't know, this is way back when. Bizarro, I recognize um, some of these um, companies. There's clear stamp. They don't mean clear stamps like we use now. And it's not clear snap, you know, the uh, kind of the uh, accessory manufacturer, the ink, you know, pad manufacturer. But I don't know, that company kind of sounds familiar to me. But they go into these different... Um, rubber stamp companies out here. Here's Hero Arts and Grapha Stamp. I really loved Grapha Stamp back when. They they lasted for quite some time, but they had a lot of uh, kind of like sea mammals and things like that. Hero Arts became, you know, very large and they're still around. As far as I know, they're still the original ownership, but I saw this one right here. I found this one kind of interesting. Mary Alice Scenic Stamps. And I kind of read a little bit down here, but... Um, it didn't, you know, I'm a scenic stamp manufacturer, but, you know, they're, they're I don't know, I, I guess that's what they just call them, you know, the, the name of the company back then, but, I don't know, there's nothing like nature related on this page right here. Um, at least funky images like these wrestlers or something like that, Minky's rubber stamps here. A lot of these companies that I see here flipping through here are based out of California. And I heard that um, kind of rubber stamping as we know it kind of started in the Bay Area from what I heard. You know, a lot of the, I don't know, three or four major companies, I, I think they were like friends or something like that, someone said. Here's a Cleveland, Ohio one, Red Rubber Valley, Fairfax, California again. Here's a Rhode Island, this one's just called the Rubber Stamp Catalog, and here's a roller wall. It looks like they had roller stamps right here, they're probably one of the early incarnations of the roller stamp, I'm assuming. Um, just in another recent video that I did, I, I thought um, Inka Dinka Do was one of the early um, roller stamp companies, but you know this is going back another 10 years. I remember in the uh, late 80s, there were these roller stamps by Inka Dinka Do, and uh, I don't remember seeing a whole lot of other roller stamps at the time, but... I don't know, Roller Wall and, you know, Incorporate, that sounds like a roller stamp company to me, and that's, you know, these images down here, it looks like they've just been rollered, rollered out, rolled out, and I, you know, I wouldn't think they were self-inking at the time either, or something like that, but anyways, Rubber Stampede, big company out of Berkeley, you know, Bay Area, but all of these images in here are quite interesting to see, you know, but as we look at these, you know, we can, I mean, I'm guessing that these are like copyright free illustration, to, you know, but look at the types of images that were uh, being used, so you can kind of imagine the usages and the type of people that were using these at the time. Um, here's three Ohio, um, you know, rubber stamp companies. Well, they weren't, I don't know, Bookman Enterprises. It doesn't look like hobbies and things. They were probably just general hobby stores or whatnot. But anyways, it goes into uh, things like alphabet sets. You know, I talk about these different things. And I don't recognize any of these um, uh, companies in here. This is Mary Alice. Oh, here's that Alice Scenic Stamps right here. So I guess alphabet sets right here. Those were a ton of work for rubber stamp companies to do. Um, we used to do one for a stamp of the hand company. And not only do you have to have all the alphabet, you know, letters, but you have to have the punctuation, you know, just some basic punctuation in there, usually in those sets. And it took a really long time to make a set. And uh, if you had a sheet of all these, you know, sp you know separate uh, alphabets, one of them cannot be have a bubble in it or something like that otherwise it ruins the entire sheet and you have to order another whole sheet just to get like say a D or some you know what I mean whatever letter um, had a bubble in it you know from the uh, you know did the uh, vulcanizing process right here but here's rubber stampede graphic stamps look at that graphic stamp look at those really ornate stamps right here hero arts looks like for kids you know or something like that or maybe for teachers you know those were uh, 
a big audience for um, you know rubber stamps as I was saying so that one was probably like a teacher's set and uh, these other ones a lot of it like I said was male artisans people that decorated um, envelopes people were doing artwork too with rubber stamps so Sister Marie Vincent Brothers. I don't know who that is, but they did this layout like that. I don't know, this is a lot of uh, calligraphers were using it. These look like carvings, and I'm guessing that someone has carved out all of these pieces right here. Susan Riken. Okay. Uh. Yeah, those look like original eraser coverings. Look at this one right here. Someone has stamped out this entire, you know, layout right here. And that was the artwork in itself. You know, it's kind of like a calligrapher's type of thing to do. And, as well as these next few pages right that. Yeah. But um, making a good impression. Um, it says early stamp pads were awful. The inks were used were terrific, uh, terrifically smelly. And, uh, you know, thinking of stamp pads, it wasn't, you know, stamp pad, the raised Ibez pads as we know them weren't around until, I don't know, it was like the mid 90s or something like that. So, quite, you know, quite a, you know, some time between when this book came out and the raised Ibez pads as we know them. Before they were the recessed pads because people didn't kind of didn't figure out how to uh, have a raised ink pad, you know, without all the ink running out and just spilling out of there. So they were using kind of more of the business style inks at the time. And uh, I don't know, people started adding, you know, kind of thicker binders or something like that into the uh, into the dye based inks, the dyes, you know, so that would, you know, that the, the pad would uh, uh, the you know the fabric of the raised dye base pads would hold that ink in in place, but um, yeah, it was quite some time before the something like that came out. Anyways, oh, this is a, a photograph that always kind of cracked me up. This is with Leavenworth Jackson here. Always loved her um, collection, curated grouping of rubber stamps. My sister really loved her stamps too. And uh, this is her, it says uh, Leavenworth Jackson cleaning her stamps, and they're all kind of the wood handle, the traditional handle style in this bathtub. Of course, she's not cleaning her stamps, and, you know, they just, uh, you know, uh, set up this shot, probably for, probably for this book or whatnot, but um, that always kind of cracked me up, and uh, I don't know, I always remember that one. Uh, look at this, this is... Uh, how you would often see stamps, you know, at those early rubber stamp shows too, you know, with a little display like that with the image back here or something like that. But those mounts right in here, they had to have the image kind of back on this little rack right here because these um, handles for them did not have an area on the back. They were the traditional kind of handle mount, you know. Um, that would probably come in a large strip and people would cut it down to size or something like that and you would just kind of glue your um, uh, die directly to either to directly to the wood or it would have a cushion already kind of you know attached to that wood handle okay you know we're talking about those types of handles right there but these ones are a little bit different but it's the same concept as far as having that handle there not what we use today but um, a lot of the stamp art was kind of, you know, just making patterns or something like this at the time. And that still continued on. I mean, look at these. These were kind of so stationary cards and bookmarks, you know. So this were, you know, often the way that stamps were um, used. Like this, very simplistically, okay. Sometimes very minimalist, you know, in terms of creating some sort of, uh, you know, artwork. Um, like a Christmas um, uh, paper, holiday papers for, you know, wrap, uh, wrapping paper, okay? Just kind of, re you know, the repetition of images, you know, at the very kind of spirit of rubber stamping right here. Kind of faux money or something like that. Looks kind of cool. Um, 
Look at these whole kind of, I don't know what these were from, like a zine or something like that. Newspaper design from New Cannon High School Publishing Workshop. Um, taught by Lori Thompson. Lori Thompson. Oh, the author of this book right here. Well, look at this, you know. <laughs> these were often, you know, the types of uh, things that I would see in, you know, different rubber stamping publications, like a rubber stamp madness, you know, the usage of the rubber stamp. Look at this right here, you know, thanks, you know, uh, wait, yeah, hand, thanks for your letter, you know, just using these little rubber stamps here and doing that kind of little um, game, you know, with the... Uh, uh, imagery and uh, letters and whatnot, so you have to kind of decode it. It's kind of fun. Stamp, stampable edibles, you know, stamping on different food. They go into a whole article about that, but um, I don't know. Homemade, it says right here, stamped on that piece of bread, you know. But it was saying that some companies made, you know, a handful of stamps specifically for, like Bizarro made. Um, some uh, stamps for food. Maybe they were selling it to the, uh, you know, the food industry or something like. I have no idea. You know, you see these like stamps on, you know, pieces of meat or something like that. Like that one says USA right there. Here's someone, you know, stamped it, you know, on some kid's face, you know. Hopefully not with uh, kind of the, some more of those, you know, kind of industrial inks at the time. I don't know if you know dye-based inks were around at the time, you know, to do something like that. Uh, Maybe like Marvy markers or something. Oh, going on. Uh, faux postage used to be really big in uh, you know the stamping hobby because of that uh, mail artisan. So you used to see a lot of companies with this kind of faux postage types of things. You know that they would like love to stamp on their envelopes and do all kinds of mail art on them. Those are really cool pieces that were uh, created. You know, so people would be doing things like this on their, you know, these happen to be like postcards here. Um, here's mail artisan examples, okay, that have, you know, been mailed around or whatnot that people have sent in or they've they collected for this uh, publication here. Air mail, you know, oh, I don't know, on and on. Stamp out Christmas, Christmas designs. Um, these ones, I don't know, these ones look like, they might be some sort of a compilation of um, some copyright free artwork and then they've just combined it with some text and then made it into a rubber stamp, I'm guessing. Mail art, really big and, you know, look at this envelope right here. Someone has drawn on here, I'm guessing, I don't, know, I don't know what part of this one could be possibly be stamped, but um, cool little things around here like that. You know, just doing patterns and whatnot, you know, to make an envelope, you know, more interesting. Back when, you know, we used to send uh, a lot more letters, you know. Fred Astaire, Soft Shoe Boulevard, Tuxedo Junction, Hollywood, California. So, I don't know, someone had that little stamp of a couple people dancing right there, you know, and just did that and created a piece out of it. And there's a little guy, maybe that's Fred Astaire with his kind of cane and top hat right there. So it's kind of cool. I like to see some more of these types of things done these days. Here's another couple people dancing and this whole layout here done with, um, you know, text, you know, an alphabet set. I mean, that's a lot of work here. But um, I know it's kind of cool, you know, it's there's something to kind of the simplicity of some of these right here. And they couldn't do everything. I'm sure there were some things that were kind of more grayscale and multicolored, but this book here, you know, was limited to a two-color um, process right here. So, um, you know, the examples, you know, look, you know, followed that uh, format, you know, accordingly. Just simple uses of designs and the repetition of form, you know, imagery, partial images used. This one looks kind of familiar right here. I think we had a stamp like that and a stamp of hand to hand with a heart on it or something like that, a carved image. 
Uh, I don't know if this one actually went out. There's actually a... That's a fake postage stamp right there. But, um... Interesting, um... Things throughout here. Some of this I'm seeing for the first time, too. I think I... Well, I probably flipped through the entire thing when I first got it, but, um... I don't know, I might not have looked at it again for, you know, quite a few years. Now look at this piece right here. This one's, um, let me see, who was this right here? I think this was done. There's a lot of repetition in here um, to create this piece right here. I have no idea what the size of this original is. It can't be too large, though, because, of you know, we are, they are stamping these each one of these things out. But... I think someone was in somewhere in here. It was mentioning um, that uh, I don't know. People were using artists were using rubber stamps um, for gallery showings and whatnot. I think it was in uh, over Europe or something like that. I think it said uh, Amsterdam or something like that. So I don't know if that's who that one. It doesn't have right, like a credit on this page right here. But anyways, this kind of reminds me of um, like doodling or something like that. I forgot that name of that um, style of uh, artwork, just, you know, with black and white, uh, kind of doodling with all kinds of elaborate um, textures and patterns and stuff like that. But this kind of reminds me of it, just done in, you know, rubber stamping form. But um, I don't know, I'm guessing it was probably done in black, you know, but they just did it in color, you know, for the uh, this book right here. Uh, rubber Stamp Madness. I wonder if that's talking about Rubber Stamp Madness. No, that's just talking about just rubber stamping in general, not the publication. Little usage of, you know, of stamps right here in this little kind of grid work format. It kind of reminds me of something like an Edward Gorey piece or something like that. You know, not the actual imagery, but just uh, kind of the format of how things are used. Uh, if some people remember, you know, if you want, grew up watching um, Sesame Street, there used to be, um, I think, the Ken Brown rubber stamps used in these kind of little stop motion um, animations that were really cool, too. I didn't see his name in here or any of his artwork, but those ones would have been around, you know, um, quite early, too. Uh, Terry Gilliam, you know, used a lot of artwork, uh, rubber stamps, as, as far as I know, I think, in. Uh, I think he used rubber stamps in some of those Monty Python animation pieces too, but look at these little <laughs> pieces of artwork right here. I mean, talk about kind of minimalist, you know, these things being thrown at these things right here. Ray De Palma. You know, you'd never see something like this being done these days, I don't think, you know. It, you certainly wouldn't see it in a publication. All right, here's some just some different images right here. I don't know if they're, you know, originals or if these are like the pieces that they're showing. But here's like this artwork, I guess. Here's this little man running around right down here. And there's, you know, there he is up on that cloud. And that's like the, uh, that artwork right there. Kind of a collage piece right here. You know, a lot of repetition of imagery, you know, to create that kind of patterning. These things look like, um, I don't know, those, like a quilt or something like that. Know, usages of stamps for something like that. Calligraphers use these uh, types of things a lot. I'm not saying this is like fine calligraphy, but this is the type of uh, usage I would see, you know, done in kind of these uh, types of formats like this. So, really fun stuff. Statue of Liberty type of thing. Uh, postage stamps, maybe they're talking about faux stamps or something like that, but anyways, this is kind of just a fun book to uh, see, you know, if you're ever interested in kind of the history of uh, rubber stamps or whatnot, you know, this book is the one, and I noticed um, there's a lot of them on, uh, like, Amazon, I looked on uh, eBay, and uh, on eBay there was one for, um, I think it was eBay, or maybe it was the Amazon one. There was a hard copy version of this, like for forty dollars or something. But there's a ton of these on sale on, uh, I think eBay. You know, these these paperback ones, used ones, of course. But it goes into a lot of different things, and 
I don't know, just the histories of it. And here's the um, kind of the reference area that I was kind of curious about. But it goes into stores carrying stamps, but it, it certainly wouldn't be the incarnation that we know we came to know more in the uh, kind of the 90s and, you know, and on from there. Um, I would say even like mid 90s, but there were st stores around in the late 80s too. Uh, well, I would say 80s, you know, this is 78, so these types of places, I don't think there would be um, dedicated rubber stamp stores back in 1987, unless it was like a business rubber stamp store, you know, that made rubber stamps that also happened to have some, that, that you know, of their own creation. I don't think they would carry um, stamps by anyone else, but um, I don't know how they found, you know, these stamp, um, these stores carrying stamps, I have no idea, unless, and I don't think, well, they might have. I, the rubber Stamp Madness is, is listed back here. So that was like the publication at the time. And maybe they, um, you know, they had a lot of these um, different um, businesses listed in there, or something of that sort. Because how would you find it, you know? You know you, how do we do anything before the, you know, the internet or something like that, you know, in terms of like finding a, a store across the... Uh, you know, the country or, you know, in a different area of the world that sold, you know, art rubber stamps. I have no idea. So here's the uh, uh, rubber stamp man. This is back before uh, their current ownership and uh, a different uh, location right here in uh, Connecticut. I always thought they were out of uh, New York, but I think they moved to New York after a while. But anyways, kind of fun stuff here. The rubber stamp album, 1987. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.